captain position almost all season long. Uh, so he's a very versatile player that can be flexible. We've seen teams kind of make these sorts of movements before, but again, it's going to be a lot of unknowns because the Chef Capital, we just don't know much about. Yeah, I mean, he, he can be a uh, versatile player. I just believe he's too valuable to take away from the care role. Regardless, going into the draft, Blackfeather comes out first for Dynasty. Kestrel is still open for Space Station, but the Blackfeather, very flexible pick, very strong at 2.9, can be played both open power and CP. And obviously Space Station going to be a little bit upset that they're not going to be able to get that pick for themselves, but that's the risk you run when you leave both the, uh, when you don't leave both the Blackfeather and the Rhyme open, but Space Station can be more than happy to secure themselves that Kestrel, almost certainly going to be going into Sneaky's hands. Another note about Space Station, I'm I just kind of go off on the side thing here. I'm very happy to see that it is Sneaky the Joker in class. Mm -hmm. Throughout the season, they had kind of been shuffling this roster around, but I feel like these three are their strongest available option. I, I do agree there. Now they have, with the Lyra first bank coming from Dynasty, I was going to say they have the potential to ban another captain and the first pick on the second rotation and a captain hero, eliminating the options available for Dynasty. So for example, picking up an Arden. Oh, perfect. With the Catherine ban, this is playing perfectly into Space Station's hands in the draft. If they pick up Arden here or any uh, hero such as the Lance captain hero, now, Dynasty's options are limited, but they still have options, obviously. Yeah, that being said, they have to have seen that coming. You know that Arden is likely to be picked when the hero pool gets squeezed as heavily. So, Dynasty, you don't ban away the Catherine in this situation unless you have another hero that you are more than willing to fall back onto. And it is going to be the Fortress. So, maybe trying to imitate a little bit of Cloud9 strategies here coming into a week number three. Right, and this is going to be a Fortress Captain. It works really well against the Kestrin. I like this pick here, just because the Wolves can block her Glimmer Shots, reducing her damage significantly. And with the Blackfeather and the and the um, Petal, I actually expect this to be a Blackfeather lane with a CP Jungle Petal. At least I hope so that you're able to dive with when you pop your Fortress Wolves and just go all in on Kestrel. We'll see if they are going to be able to go for that all-in style of play. Certainly going to be exciting to watch if they do. Alpha definitely fitting the all-in style of play uh, category right there. That's going to be coming through for the Joker alongside the Arden and the Kestrel. So how are we feeling about these two compositions? Has anyone got a significant advantage during this draft? I don't know if it's a significant advantage, but I do give a slight advantage over to the side of Salted Potatoes because I just you mean feel space like... Space Station. Space Station, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because of the fact that I feel like Alpha... After the Rhyme, I feel Alpha is the strongest jungler this update, and almost any composition that can work around the Alpha, and Kestrel is great at working around the Alpha, so is the Arden. I think that just gives them an advantage. I agree and disagree. I agree that Kestrel, Alpha, and Arden are three of the strongest picks that you have right now in 2.9, so that given over to Space Station is a huge matter. However, in my opinion, Dynasty do have a good composition to deal with it with the Fortress, with the Blackfeather and Petal diving in, so it definitely is going to come down to execution. Yeah, I'm curious to see where the Blackfeather and the Petal go, because obviously they can be swapped around. It's going to depend on com on how comfortable these guys are. Hashtag Vainglory is how you can let us know who you are going to be supporting. Jumping on into this one. Can Space Station keep their world's hopes alive? It's time to find out as we pass it over to Medic and Denominate and get into game one. Thank you very much, Munch. I am Medic. I'm joined by Denominate and we are here for game one of the series. It's going to be a, a, a spicy one. I can sense a little bit of action between these two teams. You know, you get the, the sense, the feeling as you come into these games that there's probably going to be early kills and that's what i like to see it's what you like to see denom denominate oh always now dynasty is kind of in a similar situation as fanatic they cannot make it to the number one position but they can still deny points from the enemy team so obviously space station right now in third place they technically can still get first they would have to take this whole weekend and next whole weekend just to tie sk gaming but it's still a possibility if SK doesn't gain any more points. The other team that is in a real contestion for uh, for the first place spot is G2 Esports sitting up at 26. We'll, uh, we'll get on to them a little bit later. But now Dynasty Gaming, we see the pedal come out. We saw Cavalifar have a good performance on it last game. But that was a weapon pedal in the lane. This is a crystal pedal in the jungle, which is going to be trying to deal with the Joker, who has this very strong alpha pick. 
and we know just what a threat this alpha can be, especially with the infinite reboot, that second health bar with the additional health buffs, buffs this patch. She is incredibly difficult to take down, and obviously sneaking on the Kestrel can provide a lot of burst damage, so there's a lot to look out here. Uh, look out for here coming out of the side of Space Station, but Dynasty Gaming, they have a pretty favorable composition as well. The Black Feather really excels in those extended fights, as well as the Petal can really make short work of the Alpha's health, uh, especially once that Dragon's Eye is complete. Now, the Munion attacks themselves will not scale up that Dragon's Eye, but to keep your Munions on a target, you have to be pretty much targeting them as well with your basic attacks, so you'll be able to build it up that way and here we go. Yeah, Riku Mesa thinking that he was getting back to the fountain there. It's actually going to get caught out by the Joker and Class. He will be able to get back underneath his turn. Here comes Chef Capital trying to get in from the side on towards that Alpha, but the Joker will be able to dance his way away. Class vanguards across as well, and pretty safe at the moment for Space Station Gaming. PC Lamb jumping onto Sneaky, but the early game very even between these two teams. Dynasty with this weapon power Black Feather, a pick that we've seen be so powerful on the current update. Can do a lot of work if it can get onto that backline, and it is—it's it's not the easiest backline to get onto because you've got Sneaky with the active camo, you've got the Joker who can always just go infinitely reboot back into the fight. So have to see how well Chef Capital is able to pilot this Black Feather. Yeah, this is going to be interesting, and the one big downfall to this pedal is. Obviously, Petal is going to be trying to uh, hug that back line and just get the uh, Munions targeted on to whoever she can. The Joker, though, when he uses the Core Charge, the B ability out of Alpha, he's going to load himself up with Core Overload stacks up to three, and then that's going to empower the Prime Directives. And he doesn't have to land onto Rick and Meza to get that damage, because he really only has to hit either Chef Capital or PT Lamb, and the AoE effect slashing damage that it has on the backline can chunk out this very squishy pedal very easily. Now, obviously, that's also going to be dependent on the crystal power that we get out of the Joker. He's very likely going to go with that Aftershock first. That gives you a couple benefits. It causes your abilities to come off of cooldown a little bit quicker. But in addition, when you are in Infinite Reboot, it will give you a little bit of additional um, reboot duration cut down. So it starts at four and a half seconds and you gain 20% of your energy recharge uh, as reduced time. So it's not a lot, but even a little bit, getting up a half second sooner can really change a fight. Definitely can. Something we haven't seen yet in this game are any of those fights. Four minutes in, neither team really taking the imperative, taking the impetus. Dynasty trying to do it now as they look to claim out the first crystal sentry of the game, and they will remove that from the Halcyon fold as well. So they have a slight gold lead, about 500 or so ahead, but it's nothing substantial yet. No, nothing substantial at all. Definitely something that Space Station come uh, can come back from. A little difficult trying to call them Space Station now after, <laughs> after Salty Potatoes for so long, but you know, congratulations to them. And uh, we'll have to see if they can make this Space Station proud in this matchup here. Again, they are sitting at 16 points. They could technically tie up SK if SK can't pick up another point, but we'll have to see how these games go. Obviously, against a Petal and a Black Feather, it is going to be a difficult matchup, but as the Joker and Sneaky start to scale up, it should start to become a little bit easier for them as the game goes on, because the amount of burst damage that a Kestrel and a Alpha can provide, as well as the sustainability coming out of class here on this Arden, able to give his teammates massive barriers, like right now, canceling out two, three basic attacks coming out of the side of Dynasty is going to keep Sneaky healthy enough to stay here in the lane, who I also want to add does have that Sorrow Blade, but has also picked up a level 6 infusion in case of a fight were to break out. No level ship, uh, level 6 on uh, Chef Capital yet, so he needs to get towards that, be able to Rose Offensive into that back line, catch out Sneaky and the Joker. There's the active camo used, but the Joker does have his level 6 as well, so there's so many options here for Space Station Gaming. I'm I'm almost saying a different team name from a different game because they have the same tag and I'm much more used to saying that team name, so I need to be really careful that I don't say that during this. So we're having we're both having the same problems with the X Salty Potatoes. Trying to make sure we get their name right. So let's have a quick look across what the other items are. Joker's gone for the aftershock first. Riku Meza has the shatter glass first up, so he's looking for that pure CP damage output. 
Whereas uh, Chef Capital has gone poison ship, trying to reduce any healing. The Joker will engage onto Wickermesa. Look at the damage coming in from that Prime Directive. The Fountain used. Wickermesa on the back line just about survives. And the disengage from Space Station Gaming is strong, but we can just see the signs from Space Station Gaming that they do have this strong engage, this power, if they can get onto Dynasty's back line. Or if they can get onto this turret here. Chef Capital dropping very low, and now that should be an objective. He's really going to Space Station. There it is. Yeah, seven minutes in, first turret falls. Don't even need to get a kill to do it. Just force your enemies low and then make them retreat away from you. Interestingly, the class has only just hit level six. He's not got that ultimate yet, not got the gauntlet, but still, Space Station able to use the pressure in the mid lane to now come down to this gold miner. Yeah, and I think it was, uh, you know, a little bit of a uh, misfortune that they didn't have that gauntlet yet. If they had the gauntlet there, it most certainly would have been two kills. One on Chef Capital, who, even if using the Rose Offensive to get out of the stun, would have still taken a bit of damage from it, would have likely dropped him. And then PT Lamb was very low as well, so they kind of have a little bit of a silver lining there that Dynasty was able to make it out. And now Dynasty looking to return the pressure, but against this Kestrel, able to clear out the wave so quickly and have the protection of Arden here with her, they're not able to get a whole lot down. They do take a sizable chunk out, but versus having your first turret down completely, it's not really matchable. The Joker has completed his Aftershock, so he's going to have uh, you know, consistent burst damage as he gets basic attacks down in the fights. It is going to reset the timer on his core charge, that B ability, which is going to allow him to proc the Aftershock all the more frequently, as well as build up those stacks a little bit quicker with the cooldown coming out of the Aftershock. And once you get that core over overload to three stacks, it does increase the damage of that Prime Directive. We talked about it a little bit earlier, as well as has a 100% crystal ratio on the ability itself. 1,000 gold lead, Samsung Gaming looking like they're in a strong position to start taking these turrets, start taking these fights, but still a little bit cautious as to how they actually position in the lane. They don't have the vision control that they would like. Fast sitting on a fountain and a dragon's heart won't be going towards the contraption too soon. Nice to get uh, a couple more scout traps out from him, but Dynasty Gaming are going to walk straight into the scout traps that he has at the moment. Rose Offensive used to get away from the gauntlet. It's Joker took a chunk. Dynasty still able to stay alive and get out of these fights pretty effectively. Yeah, uh, Chef Capital has gone with the Poison Shift first item now working into the Sorrow Blade. And this gives their team a couple different benefits here. So obviously the Joker will gain a little bit of health back when he procs that Aftershock. It's uh, got that 15% lifesteal of the target's max health. And it's also going to be able to cut down the barrier that Kalast is able to give a target, as well as the healing flasks that come out of each of these members. Once that mortal wound is procced, you will receive 50% less healing, 50% less barrier, and fortified health. But Petal going to help lock up that gold mine. They find a little bit of an edge. They still have their first turret down, but they've brought the gold lead that was starting to get close to that one and a half thousand mark down to just a couple hundred gold. And that's exactly what they want to do. We talked about the scaling coming out from the petal with the sea black feathers at an item and a half now as well. We'll be looking to continually stack that weapon power up. And black feather is so devastating when you get a couple of items on him. We've seen him banned in almost all the games in EU across the last few weeks. And now with Chef Capital having it coming in as a sub for the team, we'll be looking to be as effective as possible on this power pick. And the nice thing about the weapon power Black Feather is the Faint of Heart does do an execution style attack. It does do, when overdriven, 16% of missing health, but it also gains 15% of your weapon power as well. So when a target gets low, like PT Lamb is right now, you know, just visually for the health bars, that's when Chef Capital is going to be looking for the Joker or Sneaky being very low and come in with that execute attack. It can drop somebody from 50 to nothing uh, quite easily once you get, you know, the Sorrow Blade and the Breaking Point online. It's all about getting that three item spike and that building into defense. Black Feather does have to dive for the damage as well as he is an assassin. He is naturally squishy, so he's going to have to get a metal jacket to slow up the damage that uh, that Sneaky is able to put out as well as able to survive the crystal damage that the Joker is very easily able to put out as the Prime Directive and the Termination Protocol are AoE effects, and they hit hard. 
Joker's gonna jump in onto Vicky Meza, looking for the kill onto PT Lamb. The Gauntlet comes out. Joker dodging at the side of the turret lane. Chef Capsule is back, has a metal jacket, has a solar blade now. It doesn't look like PlayStation Gaming are gonna get engaged on here by Dynasty. I want to say that PT Lamb also has a metal jacket already completed on this fortress. So looking so far down that armor path needs as much protection as possible. The engage is gonna come down onto the Joker. Still has that infinite reboot, still has the termination protocol as well. If Dynasty Gaming went too far and they've lost a turret because Sneaky was exactly that as he ran into the lane, got the turret down. Yeah, two turret lead now for the side of Salty Potatoes as they are really trying to keep up Space Station Gaming. Uh, as they're trying to keep the aggression up as much as possible, the Joker very likely going to be working into either a Dragon's Eye or a Broken Myth for his second item, as well as Sneaky now finishing that extra monocle. So now Sorrow Blade, double monocle, and going into the Piercing Spear, so likely going into that Bone Saw for his fourth item. And this is a smart item choice to deal with the Metal Jacket that has already come out of Chef Capital and PT Lamb. Again, they're going to be wanting to dive that back line they are going to be susceptible to those glimmer shots so it's very smart of them to pick up this armor early dragon's eye for joker as well so he is actually going to put a lot of damage down in these fights double shatter glass for riku meza just going pure cp it's the turret here dynasty gaming will get it down pt lamb now needs to be on the retreat has usually on the hunt look at that damage from the prime directive as pt lamb is the target spontaneous combustion will slow them up and base station once again re-engaged with that prime directive i'm not sure they'll be able to catch chef capital out here should be able to get back towards base. Riku Meza, though, is not in the best of positions. PlayStation Gaming might just go for the jungle. Riku Meza doesn't get away, and Class is able to catch him out. Now tries to use the trampoline. The gauntlet doesn't hit either. Riku Meza, with the boots, will get himself back towards Crystal yeah, the jungle shot. There is a scout trap right next to him. And the one shot, one kill doesn't connect. Sneaky unable to catch out fellow laner. And it means that Space Station Gaming can start up this gold miner though. They know that Dynasty have at least one member back towards the base. So they do that gold miner very quickly as well. Already down to half PT Lamb trying to stop it. Doesn't quite have the uh, attack Ooh, of the pack yet. Oh, great steal though from Chef Capital. It does mean PT Lamb pays for it with his life. The Rose Offensive try and get away. Riku Meza takes a massive chunk. Prime Directive hits as well. Great play by Joker. And Riku Meza, you have to think, will fall here. The core charge in from the Joker. And as soon as Prime Directive is back, I actually just uses the next core charge to get that kill. It's only Chef Capital who survives after he steals away the gold mine. And it's going to be Space Station Gaming looking to push down another turret here if possible. Sneaky does destroy them so quickly as we see that turret fall in just a matter of one clip of those glimmer shots. And I do want to get on to Joker's uh, point distribution a little bit here. So he has overdriven the Prime Directive. This is a great tool for Alpha. It does give you additional range on your, uh, on your Prime Directive by overdriving it. So that is a definitely a smart thing to do now what is a little bit interesting is he has gone more of that brawler uh route in going with the overdriven core charge that does give him additional damage per stack up from 12 to 18 but he sacrifices the damage coming out of termination protocol by about 400 base damage so that is a little bit of an interesting trade-off it does go more into alpha using her a and her b for damage as opposed to the termination protocol but that ultimate is so easy to land if you save a Prime Directive for the activation. And the Prime Directive has a long range. It comes out very quickly. And against a target that requires uh, a target of its own to have any kind of movement, uh, for example, looking at the fortress, you know, he is kind of susceptible to lining himself up for that. And that allows you to position yourself onto the Black Feather and the Petal, who are going to be playing a little bit behind Fortress. So. It is an interesting trade-off there, and it's working out for the Joker right now. I'm gonna jump right into the pack. Haven't seen him actually use that termination protocol. Here it comes, looking for the damage onto Chef Capital. Wikimeza somehow survives off towards the back line. Now it's on Sneaky. He needs to get the damage onto PT Lamb. Wikimeza chased in with the Prime Directive. It's already a one-for-one -one trade as Dynasty Gaming trying to retreat out of this. Spontaneous combustion used, and Chef Capital will jump across with a faint of heart, but the chase is on. Sneaky wants the kill, it's himself a second. And perhaps we'll just allow Wikimeza to escape. Takes away the tree ant, and it looks like Class is gonna start up the Kraken and Space Station Gaming should be able to get this for themselves. Yeah, Space Station Gaming definitely going to be looking for it pretty easily. The amount of damage that Kestrel does to neutral objectives uh, just through the Glimmer Shots, as well as each of those Glimmer Shots will stack up one point of the Bone Saw onto that Kraken. So it's not 
a whole lot of a difference, uh, but you definitely will see those glimmer shots start to rack up a little bit more damage on each hit. It's not like a massive change like we see out of a breaking point, but definitely can be effective. Again, neutral objectives do not walk away from your skill shots, which makes heroes like Kestrel, Celeste, and Rhyme so efficient at taking that objective down. Uh, Scarf as well. But now only two turrets stand between the space station and a victory, and Dynasty Gaming are on the chase. They are looking for it. The corner is down, but it's sneaky, just alive on the back line. Capital trying to get there, does manage to get the trade kill. And now the second corner comes out with the Echo, looking for Wicked the Prime Directive. He jumps away with the trampoline, still gets chased in with that core charge, and Joker is not sacrificing anything here. He'll get the kill. The core charge goes down. The Kraken there pushing into the crystal turrets as well. You have to think that this is just the game for Space Station Gaming. Shouldn't be nothing that PT Land can do to stop this one from going down. Yeah, 10 seconds on Chef Capital, 20 seconds for Riku Meza, a very healthy Kraken, as well as two members of Space Station whacking on this turret and now the crystal. That's game number one going over to Space Station Gaming, making a good name for themselves as they were obviously just picked up by this organization. Coming through here with a very convincing win here on day one. Definitely a good start for them. They obviously had a good performance last week as well able to make it quite far in comparative uh, speaking to what we normally see out of them. So got to be proud for these guys as they take down Dynasty Gaming. They put their 17th point on the board and are looking for more. Yeah, pretty clean win from them as well. I'm sure they'll be looking for a sweep 2-0 if they can make it. To hand it, uh, We're going to hand it back towards our analysts to munch and the guys to break down that game and lead us into game two of this series. Thank you very much, guys. What an interesting game coming out from these two teams. It was only 17 minutes long. We didn't actually see any kills for the first, like, 13 minutes yeah. of the game or something. It was a very uh, kind of macro-focused game. And then everything exploded right at the end. Yeah, I mean, pretty much just four minutes of action closing this game out. And a side of Space Station able to really put on a strong performance in those four minutes. But a lot of it was built up to in that first 13 minutes of being able to just farm efficiently mm -hmm and get themselves just enough of an advantage that when they did t choose the time to strike, they were able to get what they needed. Also, to be fair, there was a bunch of action throughout the first 13 minutes. It just didn't result in kills because both teams were playing very safe. Every time anyone got too low, they backed away and they gave up the objective to their opponent instead of trying to contest it and give kills on top of it. So, calculated play, you could say. Yeah, absolutely. Making sure that they don't give away any kind of a lead to their opponents. Now, our first kill came through at around 30 minutes and 40 seconds on into the game. This was after three turrets had already gone down on the map. Yeah, and this was, first of all, a great steal by members of Dynasty to take that gold miner, but the risk versus reward then comes into play because off of that steal, Space Station were able to get themselves a couple of kills and take a turret, a tier two turret, no less, in the lane. So overall value of that play ends up going in favor of Space Station. Yeah, I mean, the choke point turret going down for the side of Space Station after they got the two kills, it just, that's the the, the thing that allowed them to win the yeah. game with the Kraken push, because once the choke point turret is down, it doesn't even deal damage to the Kraken or this explosive damage. Exactly, and that, that those explosions from the touch, that percent damage is often the difference between a Kraken pushing further and, and falling down early. Let's take a look at the double kill that led to the Kraken coming out for Space Station. Yeah, and first of all, just the and the damage being done by this Kestrel kiting out against the Black Feather so efficiently, getting underneath the turret to the point where now all of a sudden uh, Chef can't continue that chase, and Sneaky is just able to stay safe for so long. Alpha buying a lot of time. The Joker because he didn't go down while in that reboot phase, which maybe a little bit a bit of a mistake from Dynasty to not actually secure that kill. It just bought so much time for Sneaky to just pepper those Glimmer shots into the fight and get the damage. Yeah, I mean, the thing about Fortress Walls, if you're going to use them, but at the same time be ahead of them with the Black Feather diving onto the Kestrel, you're still going to take the damage. Those walls will not be blocking the damage because you're ahead of them. So it would have been better for Dynasty to actually let the Wolves go and block the Kestrel damage and the Focus Alpha from the beginning of the team fight, rather than deciding to do that later on, a few seconds later, after Alpha had done a lot of damage. So, a little bit of misplay, not understanding how they could play their composition, and that's where the execution part that I talked about in draft came into play. The Kraken was taken at the end there, and yep. that was the 
ending push. Yeah, that was all they needed to finish out that game. I have to say, very impressed by the Joker's scoreline coming into that one, but let's take a look at the damage that came out from each of these members during the game. And it was the Joker topping the table, and you can see very convincing statistics across the board coming out from Space Station. Yeah, the only one that didn't out-damage their counterpart was in the <laughs> captain role. And that's to be expected when one captain builds an aftershock. You expect them to have a little bit more damage. Yeah, obviously, it's such a SK were the winners there. They were the winners earlier on today, but it was Space Station <laughs> winning this one in the end. Fantastic stuff coming out from Space Station in game one of this series, though. And I have to ask, what are you expected to see changing up from Dynasty coming into this next game? Because it feels like maybe you can't let this Kestrel through against Space Station. I mean, y you could let it through. They had a plan going up against it also with the Wolves, but they have to execute on pawn their plan. You can't just expect the plan to work itself. Other than that, given over Alpha and Arden with the Kestrel, perhaps not the best thing. I mean, these two, uh, three picks that uh, Space Station had were just re too strong in 2.9. Yeah, the difficult thing here, though, is if you don't want to give the Kestrel over, mm -hmm. Space Station's on the A side. They're not likely to ban the Black Feather, so you now have to choose. Yeah. Are you going to give them the Black Feather or the Kestrel? Which one do you feel is the lesser of two evils? Yeah, that's going to be the question coming on in here. And obviously, Rhyme is going to be the first band coming through for the likes of Space Station. <laughs> oh. Dynasty saying, you know what? We're going to get one of these power picks too. Yeah, that's exactly what happened in game one, where it's Dynasty that got the Black Feather, Space Station took the Kestrel. This time, Space Station are going to be the ones getting the Black Feather in their hands. I would actually prefer to see them not pick up the Kestrel here, let them have the Black Feather, but decide to go for something else. Go for the Rona, for example. It works really good against the Black Feather just because it's a melee versus melee matchup and can play into it really well. They decide to go for the Grace first and then ban the Catherine, so saving their carry picks for later on. Yeah, and this is smart to do. You don't want to show that Rona early in the draft because Space Station could very easily then take something like the Kestrel to go up against the Rona, which has that range advantage. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Dynasty didn't ban that away here instead uh, because if you want to go with the Rona, if you're thinking of going the Rona, which is, does work into Black Feather, yeah, you need to take some of the range away from them, a Space Station ban. Yeah, I was going to say, when you leave it open, uh, it's most likely that Space Station will ban it because they don't want you to pick it against the Black Feather just because it's a top priority pick. So if you had already planned that you were going to go for this Rona, then you leave it open, forcing Space Station to ban it, and then you don't have to worry about going up against it. Well, now Space Station is going to have to figure out something that will have that range to try and deal with the Rona. You, maybe they end up flexing the Black Feather into the jungle and go for a Scarf instead, uh, but you, you cannot pick another melee carry if you're inside of Space Station here. What I would actually prefer to see here from Space Station now to their part of countering this draft is put the Black Feather in the jungle SCP, pick up a Vox and lane, and pick up something such as the Arden. Have a composition that can kite out the Rona instead of fighting her head on. I, I, I stood corrected last week when I said the best brawling composition was on the side of Black Feather. It actually is always on the side of Rona if it's a triple melee versus triple melee. Yeah, I mean, we saw during those team fights last weekend that Rona, once it's got that breaking point, if you can hit three members for a little while, you will stack up so quickly mm -hmm. and just start annihilating health bots. And I do like the Lance pick here because you do, again, have that those Githian walls that are up very frequently, as well as the Impales, to try and stop the Rona from being on top of your targets. So uh, as long as this play from PT Lamb in the captain role, or sorry, from Clast, because uh, it's over on Space Station side, is on point, they can keep this Rona at bay and prevent her from really being able to stack up as quickly as she's going to need to. Exactly. I mean, their one condition here is going to be about keeping their range, keeping their distance, and with a CP black from the jungle, they should be able to do that. So survive through the early game, early game levels, get to your level eight, keep your distance at that point, and always use the last Kithian walls to stun, to stun uh, Rona. Not only are you going to be stunning the, the carry player from the side of Dynasty, but you're also going to be cancelling her ultimate, the Red Mist, every single time she uses it. So, Space Station, I, 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 this draft is, has been incredible in my opinion. Both teams counter playing so far. It's going to be a Fortress is the final lock in here for Dynasty, so sending that one to the jungle, I'd assume, unless they want to do some kind of shenanigans with the Grace, but it feels most likely that that Fortress will go on into the jungle. What do we make of this composition with the Fortress rounding this out? I kind of like the Fortress just because of the fact that it provides the extra move speed that this Rona could need 
to get onto a target. It's a little bit of a risky pick because you're still going into this melee, you know, triple melee composition, and the Vox can just kind of dance around all day long against it. But if you're trying to get this Rona to be your hard carry, the Fortress can enable that. It also should be able to scale fairly well going up against the CP Blackfoot in the jungle. Unless Blackfoot plays really aggressive, he should be able to get his levels and items, and that allows Fortress to be a strong pick late game. Again, this draft has been very intelligent draft coming out from both teams. I'm actually very surprised in their understanding of the meta and how to counterpick their opponents as this draft went on. Great adaptation. All right, so my big question then, very quickly, what does Dynasty have to do to even up this series right here? At Dynasty, they just need to play to their range advantage. All right, we'll see if they can pull that one out during this game. It's time to get on into things. Let us know if you're supporting Dynasty or if you want Space Station to finish off their first series in 2-0 fashion. It's time to pass it back over to our casters and get into game number two. It's Medic and Denomine. Thank you very much, Munch. I'm joined by Denomine, and we're going to get into the second game of this series. Thus far today, we have only seen two O's. I'm sure Space Station Gaming will be looking to clean up this game as well. An interesting composition, you have to say coming out here from Dynasty with the Fortress in the jungle, not something we always see. You see more of a Roma. It looks like both the teams are going to face off in the middle of the jungle to start us off. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be our start. Now, the Fortress and the Rona do have a uh, good bit of synergy, as well as when paired up with the AoE crowd control that comes out of PT Lamb, they can have an opportunity where they can lock sneaky up you know rona can jump past with the into the fray that's going to cause a area of slow that you know vox doesn't have free reign to walk through at least uh, if he's trying to avoid damage as well as uh, obviously that holy nova coming out can be detrimental to a carry as well and what's incredibly important here is the amount of burst damage that Arona can provide. It's going to be all about Joker trying to uh, outperform Chef Capital here. Now, obviously, it is going to be Dynasty. They are down a game. They have to pull things together here. But if Blackfeather is allowed to just freely poke, if these odd points, especially once they get to level 8, can have some crystal power behind them, if he's just allowed to safely poke down targets, it's going to result in a War Treads coming out of class and probably Sneaky as well, where they can just chase down that uh, crippled target and then it capitalize as much as they want on the back of it. So I got to say, I like the composition that um, Space Station had put together as long as it's not hard engagements out of Dynasty. Joker needs to try and dodge away from this, but I think he's going to be the first blood. It's first blood to Dynasty. Two minutes in. We seem to have this track record of a really slow early game in the first one. And then the second game is just really quick and we get tons of kills early on. So hopefully that continues. Uh, we saw it in the SK Fanatic series. We're seeing it here as the first blood goes down at two minutes. Class trying to knock PT Lamb back, but that Retribution does a lot of damage. And PT Lamb will force the Healing Flask out of class. Chef Capital trying to jump in. Impale actually does land here, and Chef Capital needs to be a little bit wary as he takes some resonance bounces. Space Station Gaming unable to get a return kill after losing Joker early on in the enemy jungle. Yeah, that like you mentioned, that benediction coming out of Grace is so threatening in the early game, and we really see it there. And now the Joker did overstay his welcome quite a bit, going very deep into the enemy jungle, and that's the kind of thing he has to be careful about, especially in the early game. Before he has the Rose offensive, he's very susceptible to damage as well as crowd control. But as he hits that level six mark, he'll have a little bit easier of time getting in and out of fights. He does have to watch out for the burst that Rukumbeza is going to have, though. He's very close to getting that aftershock online just a couple hundred gold away. And that's going to be where Fortress does start to take off with his mid-game aggression. Now, the Fortresses that we see successful in the jungle position typically start off with a Dragon Blood and look to uh, push the aggression early against a pick like a Crystal Black Feather that takes time to ramp up. I didn't see that come out of Rukumeza here, so that's a little bit of a downfall on Dynasty Gaming. They were able to get the kill, but they're not able to get any kind of counter jungling started up. Now, Sneaky getting a little bit caught out here. Jumped up by Rickomanza, but will we just be able to Sonic Zoom his way to safety? The jump in from PT Lamb. Can't quite get the connection with the knockup, and Dynasty Gaming just continually harassing this lane as well. The Impale doesn't connect. Joker does come in from the side. Great if your wall hits up all three members of Dynasty, but they will just be able to walk away. No damage really yet on Space Station Gaming, Your meaning that they cannot clear out those kills, even though Blast had set them up so effectively. 
And that Githian wall specifically is one incredibly useful tool that Space Station has against this Rona. If Rona jumps in and goes to use that red mist, he can easily push her back out of the damaging radius that that ability has and protect Sneaky and the Joker quite consistently, and then they're going to have to look for a follow-up engage out of Rikumeza. And, uh, you know, looking over at Dynasty, they do have a lot of mortal wounds in their kit, so the foe splitter coming out of Rona inflicts a mortal wound. Obviously, Fortress able to inflict a mortal wound as well. So there's not any additional healing or realistic barrier that comes out of the side of uh, Space Station, but if they can reduce some of that fountain healing, that's going to be where they're going to have to execute Sneaky, is when he receives less healing, it's going to give him less sustain in these fights, and that's kind of key, is getting Sneaky down. Vikumeza now has his Aftershock as well, so that will help them get Sneaky down, get a bit more burst coming out from that Fortress. Also level 6, that has the attack of the pack, but here comes the engage. Good double knock up. There's the Gideon Wall healing class used by class as he runs away from the action. Dynasty Gaming jumping in. Chef Capital there as well. Great Rose offensive through the team. And now Chef Capital so low, but he's going to jump back in. Look at the damage on towards Sneaky in that backline. Somehow he survives the heals just at the last moment. will keep him alive. And those resonance bounces are doing work now. Vikumeza will manage to escape, but in the end, it's a one for zero trade in favor of Space Station Gaming. One for zero trade, and very important to make note, was PT Lamb actually had the fountain. They had the advantage for that fight, and they still stayed a little bit too far. Good timing out of Sneaky with that healing flask saved him on the brink of death. And, and that's Space Station taking down that first objective in Dynasty Gaming. They were looking to stop the recall there, didn't quite make it in time, so everybody from Space Station there gonna make it out safely as Sneaky now already has a level 5 infusion in pocket likely gonna hold that as long as he can so he can get the highest level use out of it but it has put him back on his poison ship. Great impale onto PT Lamb is gonna cause his downfall as well Sneaky his second kill of the game also a 20 CS lead in the lane so he is pretty darn dominant at the moment has that breaking point already finished building up towards his next weapon power item as well this is what you want to see if you're a Space Station Gaming, you know, you've just signed on with a new organization, you were of course Salty Potatoes from last week, but you want to show that you deserve the position that you've got, you want to show that you deserve the, the wins that you got in the last couple of weeks, and that you can challenge, and collected. to be able to challenge, you have to win these games against lesser opponents, you know, Dynasty are in the challenge battles, they're, they're looking like, well, they're in the challenge battle region at the moment, the challenge zone. And they're looking as if they're going to stay there for the rest of the split. So if you're Space Station Gaming, you're very confident with the way you're performing at the moment. And you need to keep up this tempo and this 2,000 gold lead sets you up very well to do that. Yeah, it definitely does. And now we did mention the you know challenge zone. The challenge battles have changed a little bit. It is the bottom two teams now, not the bottom three. So with them sitting 10 points up over the competition, that would mean that either Clash or Calamity Reborn would have to make it to the finals in both weeks to pass them in points. Now that's highly unlikely, so Dynasty should be safe uh, as far as you know staying out of that challenger zone. But you know they still obviously want to deny as many points away from the Space Station as they, they can. They want to use this as a good practice towards the next season, season as well. So, you know, a good performance here might not have a lot on the line, but for your pride and for obviously just, you know, proving that you are a better team, that you, you know, are better than this sixth seed uh, mark that you have next to your name on the tournament standings. And the competition is actually really close for the middle couple teams here, for Space Station, Mouse Sports, Fnatic, Dynasty. We're very close in points and we're very close in skill level at this point as well. Yeah, I think I just got uh, Ashen Dynasty confused for a second there. My apologies, because Dynasty aren't in that challenge battle zone, as you say. I uh, do want to still keep getting those points in case. But you never know, something might happen. Uh, superior runs from teams past. With a 2,000 gold lead now, you have to think that Space Station Gaming have this game pretty much locked up for the time being. Poison Shiv finished on Sneaky. You've got the Aftershock as well on that CP Black Feather starting to scale up pretty effectively and it's becoming harder for Dynasty to actually take fights that are advantageous to them. PT Lamb trying to help them out by getting himself an Atlas Pauldron after the fountain, but looks like Space Station Gaming are just st stepping in from the side, getting a bit of damage down on towards that Grace. Here comes the engage. Great Githian Wall once again. So many great Githian Walls in this game. Lance doing absolute work. Sneaky kiting back. Stutter stepping to supreme 
skill, and that means that they will get the kill on towards Chef Capital as well. Dynasty Gaming limping away, just two members. But Space Station Gaming can just push in and look for some damage on this turret. Yeah, they might even look for the whole turret, as all members are quite healthy still. They have a sizable wave here as well. The Joker does have the aftershot complete, does a decent chunk to objectives, but he's likely working into the Shattered Glass or the Dragon's Eye for his next item. Uh, possibly a Broken Myth. We'll have to see what he upgrades the, uh, the Crystal Bit into to know for sure. And uh, the Joker is looking like he's working towards either an Atlas Pauldron or a Metal Jacket. I think the Metal Jacket is the uh, better item choice into a Rona, specifically because when a Rona does get Atlas Pauldron, she's almost certainly just going to go ahead and throw out that Red Mist. She doesn't rely on attack speed during that time, and you can actually bypass the whole duration of that Atlas. And Dynasty Gaming looking for a little bit of a trade here as they go into the jungle. So much damage already fallen on towards the Joker. The Fountain heals him up just enough to get him out with the Mortal Wounds. And the Great Githium Wall once again by the class pushes them back. Chef Capital's not done yet though, going for Sneaky. Wait for it, does get the silence up and Sneaky's doing so much work in this fight. Space Station Gaming Double somehow kill. coming out with the win, but great play by Mikumeza to take down two. Double class kill. goes in for the double for himself. Great Ace. play by the Captain and Space Station Gaming are able to win out the fight in the end, but it looks so close for so long. Yeah, I looked very close, and now with an ace wave, a double ace wave, in fact, pushing up towards this turret, it's going to take some time away from Riku Meza and Jeff Capital, as they're going to have to defend the turret away from the... I mean, look how much damage is already ramped up without any heroes here. That turret is down below half health at this point, right about half health. So that is an absolute huge, even though it was only the captain that stayed alive, classed because of the ace wave, able to get a massive portion of damage down. If it would have been Joker or Sneaky surviving there at the end, it very likely would have been a whole turret. But you gotta be happy with what you got. As Rona, you know, we are at this 11 minute mark and does not, oh, well, just now finished the second tier three item in that breaking point. And this is a big opportunity where Chef Capital can start to ramp up the damage very quickly, especially if he can get a red miss down that's hitting multiple targets, uh, which can be fairly easy to do with the Blackfeather, who's obviously wanting to commit to the fight, the Lance, who's going to want to commit to the fight. But at the same time, that Githian wall you have to be worried about, and he's a whole offensive item down on Sneaky, as well as some defense. So that's kind of the the trade-off here on this Rona, is not having as much defense is a little bit counteracted by the fact that she can build up fortified health, but class able to cancel that ability out pretty easily. He is, and now with three completed items on towards Sneaky, we've seen how good his stutter steppering is on this Vox. I'm sure he's going to continue to play as effectively through these next fights. Infusion finished on Joker. He's at level 10 Infusion alongside Sneaky. No Infusions yet onto Dynasty, so if a fight erupts soon, Space Station Gaming would have the advantage. I mean, they are 3,000 gold ahead. Dynasty still don't get an Infusion on that rotation towards the shop, so this is what Space Station want. They want to go in. Chef Capital takes a negative trade against the Joker. PT Lamb looking for that engage. Jumps in. Great break for it. It gets a triple silence. Double stun from the Githian Wall. And now they're all trying to get onto Sneaky. But look at the kite. Look at the moves. Look at the plays as he jumps all the way back. The fountain too little too late. And Space Station Gaming going to clean this one up. Plays out of this world from Sneaky. PT Lamb trying to get away. But a great Githian Wall. I've said that so many times this game. He has been absolutely on double point kill. with the Impale. A double and ace. Space Station Gaming clean up the Crystal Sentry and might Crystal even Sentry be able to push feeding. towards those Crystal Turrets off this push. Now they should at least get the choke point turret down. It's already quite hurt. They have an ace wave coming up. They have all three members. But now with Chef Capital coming up and Riku Meza coming up, they don't want to go a little bit too far. They all are all very healthy. But with Dynasty Gaming being so close to their base, they could easily walk back into that fountain, get some additional healing, come right back into the fight, and that far away, that's not something that the side of Space Station Gaming have going for them, so they take the smart route, they rotate down to the jungle shop, Sneaky has picked up uh, a Journey Boots now, looking to be able to constantly keep his speed up in these fights, as they're rotating up on Dynasty here again, can Clast find a good impale? 
Right, on point there from the Joker. Chef Capital has got onto Sneaky. The wait for it once again. And look at Sneaky. The Journey Boots just gets him back out of the fight. Impale onto Rikumezo in that front line. They're trying to jump in, but another Great Githian Wall. And this man do anything but hit Great Githian Walls. I don't think so. Still, Chef Capital goes in, and they do eventually get the kill. And Dynasty Gaming maybe have turned this one around. It's onto the Joker. Rikumezo low. Chef Capital low as well. Rikumezo just about escaping. Another superlative Githian Wall from Class. Knocks them both into the wall. Joker's going to try and chase Rikumezo out here. Doesn't quite have the Rose Offensive, still 12 seconds left on that, and on point might connect, but I think Rikumez is just a little bit too far away. Joker catches onto the Crystal Sentry. Look at the support of combat. The roams up against each other here as PZ Lamb getting chased out by class. It ends up being a one-for-one -one trade, but Space Station Gaming still somehow come out on top. Yeah, they, I think in the actual gold trade-off, it does end up going over to the favor of uh, Rukumeza as far as, you know, who got more for the single kill. But with the fact that Space Station Gaming are going to go ahead and take a gold mine as well, it's going to extend their lead at this point. They're already 4k and ahead in gold, gold and now they are sitting at almost 6,000 gold as they collect that... Uh, at uh, full gold mine payout there. The Joker does have his Broken Myth online and is working into a third offensive item now. The Aegis is complete, so he has that sustainability into Rikumeza. But we've been able to have Dynasty actually find a lot of damage in fights. They're just not able to secure Sneaky. They did get him in that last one, but a three-man impale coming out of class followed up by a three-man on point from the Joker, did so much damage to that squishy, uh, or well, the low remaining health targets, and that they were able to even things out and eventually take away some farm as well. 15 minutes in the game, Kraken is up on the board and ready to go. This is still anybody's game, man. There is a 6,000 gold lead for Space Station Gaming, though. They do have that extra gold in that back pocket. Got a broken myth finished on towards the Joker as well. All he needs to do is get a good engage, but Chef Capital is the one jumping in onto Sneaky. There's the attack of the pack as well. The kite back. Great. Get the wall once again. Class the boy. The wait for it comes out and silences them all as well. Sneaky still getting jumped on though. The fountain. The crystal sentry here to try and help out. It's now a 4v3. A space station game and try and make the plays, but Sneaky is dead. And that is great for Dynasty. They'll pop their fountain in a little bit later. And Chef Capital should be able to heal back up. The Gideon Wall knocks them both back. Joker trying to kite around the fight, but it looks like he's going to be the next to fall. The Impale lands, but Joker just about escapes. Eventually gets taken down by Rikumeza. And Dynasty Gaming now able to start winning these fights, even with a gold lead. Space Station Gaming getting caught out on that back line. Great play by Dynasty. Ace. They get the ace, and they can look towards the Kraken as well. Yeah, and, you know, fortunately they were able to get that ace. They were all a little bit too low to actually safely start off that Kraken. The attacks coming down from the Kraken likely would have killed them. But Rhoda coming over the wall, they're able to find Kalas. Uh, the kill actually, I believe, went on to Rikumeza. But, you know, they get a free Kraken now. There are four turrets between them and a victory, which means this push will not be the end of the game unless they can find a... Uh, Pretty much a miracle ace um, to get this Kraken through. Journey Boots complete for Chef Capital now. He will have that ability to re-engage multiple times in a fight. And they are taking down the first of five turrets between themselves in a victory. And it is Sneaky and the Joker already working on that health. But here we go, Rikumas is in. Great, get the wall once again. The way for it comes out, Chef Capital having to run all the way away. PC Lamb down. So about two thirds of his HP, but Space Station Gaming do have to turn their eyes back towards the Kraken, clear that out as quickly as possible. Like it's only going to get a couple of turrets off this track, actually, as Dynasty have given up the Ghost on that one. They'll take the Crystal, Crystal Sentry away, Kraken down to less than half now, and if he gets this turret, that'll be good for them. If not, Space Station Gaming will definitely think they've come out with a win here, but the Kraken will get just enough attacks in, not quite. One last also would have done it, but Space Station Gaming able to stop it in its tracks and maintain that 6,000 gold lead. Yeah, just a couple seconds longer on that Kraken's health bar, that would have been a drop turret, but they hold on with a thread. And one thing that's really turned a couple of these last fights is we have two Atlas Pauldrons complete for PT Lamb and Riku Meza. And we talked about the Atlas Pauldron not being very effective against the Rona earlier because of the Red Mist. That's not the same case for Sneaky. So once PT Lamb and Rikumeza get in, if they stagger their Atlases uh, properly, they can really negate a lot of that damage that can potentially come out of Sneaky, as well as uh, reduce his ability to ramp his damage up through a fight. And that really gives some more sustainability to the side of Dynasty Gaming. If there's less damage coming in, obviously your tanky frontline in this Rona 
is going to be able to excel pretty heavily. Riku Meza doesn't have a block or any shield, but is working into a third offensive item, and they are looking just purely to burst down Sneaky. Once Sneaky dies, the Joker should not be able to pull off a 2v3 with a Crystal Blackfeather. Crystal Blackfeather, all about the poke, and then coming in for maybe a final execution, but does not have hugely sustainable damage throughout a fight, especially into heroes that have Mortal Wound that will reduce the barrier he gives himself with that on point. Gold lead shrinking ever so slightly, down to about 3,000. Dice to Gaming are in a strong position to take this series all the way to that final game. Space Station Gaming, I'm sure, don't want to go there yet. PT Lamb down to half the jump in once again by Chef Capital. The block on the Githian War, but PT Lamb is so low, he's going to have to try and use that Divine Intervention. Capital healed up, 800 HP back on towards that carry. Not enough to get all the way onto the back line of Sneaky and Dynasty Gaming, unable to find the engage. Run away back to their base, but still positive sign for Dynasty at the moment. They keep winning out these fights, even with PC Lamb chunked down, they are able to find the fights that they want. Yeah, and important to make note in that last fight was both PT Lamb and Class both held on to their fountains, so those both will be ready to go for the next skirmish that breaks out. But Kalast has also picked up a uh, Shiver Steel, and that's an item that we've seen fallen off the meta for quite some time now. You see it come back in here and there, but the nice thing about the Lance is his basic attacks can hit multiple targets. Hold on, here we go. All in on that engage. Chef Aptal all the way onto the back line. The mortal wounds, but the Vox still alive. And here comes the turnaround. Space Station Gaming get the stun. Rekumez are doing a lot of work. Sneaky goes low to wait for it. Sneaky's going to have to dodge in the midst of the fight. Chef Capital is so low. Another Githian wall only gets a stun onto one. Rekumez dies. And now PT Lamb so low as well. And they killed off all the members. Dynasty Gaming fall. Space Station Gaming come out on top. Yeah, and with these 40 second death timers, this is Space Station Gaming just looking to hopefully close out the game here. Timers are ticking down and taking these turrets will start to uh, reduce those timers as well. So they're going to have to take these turrets down quickly if they want to close the game out off this push. If they're not able to close it out, it could be a risky push. But, you know, with the ace minions coming in, they should have no problem. It brings down those barriers. They're splitting the damage fairly well. And now all three members are on to the Vein Crystal. And that is Space Station Gaming, newly acquired team. Going to go ahead and pick up their first win underneath this organization name. 2-0 for them. They take... Series and they go through to the semi-finals tomorrow. Great stuff.